guys and welcome to my daily painting studio where I paint fun little daily paintings. I hope all you lovely creators can learn not to care so much and just paint. Today we're painting a fun little daily painting of two chilies that I picked from our garden. This is the time where you experiment and have fun and try different ways of doing things. The canvas today is a five inch square that I got from Art Supplies Australia and the colours I used were ultramarine blue, cad yellow medium, some raw sienna, white, black and a smidgen of trials with some chromium green and phthalo green because like I said I wasn't sure quite which sort of colour scheme I was going for in this painting. So let's start by showing you a recipe for the background colour which is gorgeous. Alrighty, so the recipe here for the colour, I used some alizarin crimson um, to give it the, the pinky tone and then I mixed in some cad yellow medium um, which makes it that peachy colour and a quite a lot of white and then I also just added in a little bit of the um, raw sienna just because. Alrighty, so the next thing we're doing is we're just very quickly covering that canvas, a nice thick layer of paint, um, make sure there's no little white blotchy bits anywhere in there, you want a really nice thick cover over, um, over this. If you um, have enough paint or want to, you could also do uh, two layers as well. And just make sure you go around the sides of these little canvas boards too, otherwise you get little white bits um, that can that can peek through there. And then make sure you get um, make sure that is dried really well before you do anything else. And yes, of course, it always helps if you subscribe to my channel. Um, and the next thing we're going to be doing is just sort of quickly having a bit of a look at the placement. Now, uh, fortunately for me, these are actually almost the same size as I need them on the canvas. Um, and I am, I've decided just to very quickly sketch these in with some of the um, raw sienna that's in. Normally I would use like an umber um, to put these in because you can get some better darks and things in there. But um, it's kind of what I had on the canvas. So I am just going with that. Um, before I painted in acrylics, I did quite a lot with oils and... Um, my favourite way of painting with oils was a fairly traditional way of doing a tonal underpainting um, in like a burnt umber or raw umber and um, those sorts of things with white and getting the, the tones really correct and then glazing over the top with transparent colours um, in the oils with mediums and things and I loved doing that. Um, I guess it's probably why I paint so thinly with acrylics which isn't um, necessarily always good but it's just the way I paint and you know like if you don't like it well then <laughs> not my problem um yeah and so I'm just popping in a couple of the you know like the key areas in there that I just want to think about and the most important thing for me here um with this was catching the fact that there's some reflected light off the bottom of this table um that's kind of reflecting onto um the sort of the underside edge of where the chili meets the table so there's kind of that top white light um, you know where the the lights are, are hitting it from the um, the lamps and things, but also there's another little area of of light that's down just um, on the lower side of that chili, just sort of reflecting off the table. And so I'm just in my head, you know, like ah, oh, yeah, I've got to put that in. So um, it was a little bit difficult putting in all the lights and things to get the form really well with the with the. Um, the raw, um, raw sienna there rather than like an umber um, just because it doesn't have quite that darkness in it you know and I didn't want to start bringing in other colors and things like black or anything in there so um, yeah the only thing is when you when you put in like an underpainting sort of thing like this um, particularly with acrylics and you're not um, sort of glazing over the top of it um, you need to be a little bit careful that the color um, doesn't show through as much and so those first layers that you put down of your paint might look a little bit dull and a little bit muted um, and that's not necessarily the fact that you've got your paint color wrong it's the fact that your paint isn't necessarily thick enough um, to you know like cover um, cover that color so it's sort of kind of like bleeding through a little bit even though this was dry and I did dry the you know like the under like I guess the underpainting first. It didn't take too long. I just you know sort of muddled it through. I just wanted to get an idea in my head of roughly where I was going to put things, um, and at, you know halfway through I was like, yeah, I don't have time for this, and um, the sienna is not the right color for that. So um, yeah, we just we just kind of gave up on putting that in properly, and then just went straight into some some color. So I'm using ultramarine and cad yellow medium here. Um, I think at some point I might go back and you know redo these and have a have a bit of a play with the different 
different mixes and things for that I did briefly look at you know some of the other greens and things but you know ultramarine it's just I don't know it, it's it's my sort of go-to go-to um, blue that's on my on my palette so it's sort of the one I used um, and I was just you know like playing around with these colors because um, I haven't actually painted <laughs> chilies like this particularly before so um, I was just playing around that's what daily painting is it was like whatever doesn't go down in you know like that hour is kind of where we end up so um, you know I'm not I'm not going to do five trial you know paintings of this and then um, you know spend four hours figuring out how to do a five inch canvas we just get it done and get on with it and next time around you know like maybe next time I've got some paint floating around I will go back and um, have a play with that um, so with with the color choices here oh see also I think you can probably just see sort of in the middle of the chili when I'm putting the paint over it it's kind of like rubbing back off again and um, the paint sort of a little bit tacky on the surface and it's just sort of rubbing off with the brush so um, there are a couple of spots in there that I'm not touching at the moment just because um, they need to actually dry and um, cure a little bit on the top before I can go back over them with a the paintbrush because it's just rubbing off the underlayer and not putting on more paint over the top so that's not really being very helpful. So you can see in there I'm just putting in that slightly lighter green um, strip that's in there and you can kind of see it's all a bit blocky at the moment and I'm just sort of kind of muddling it through uh, again because you know the acrylic paints I'm painting with are actually quite thin um, and with my um, with my dodgy hand at the moment I don't have the force in, in my hand to use bigger brushes and sort of yeah um uh you know some more you know like forceful strokes and things on there it has to be it has to be quite little so um uh lots of little layers and things work with my hand and sort of work with how i like to paint anyway so oh yeah that's again there's a little um paint pulling off in the middle there so just dry it and then um come back to that area so um, I paint with the Atelier interactive paints which are amazing but they do reactivate with water so if you're continually going over the same area um, after it's been a little bit tacky or slightly dry it will re-pull the paint back off which is great if that's what you want but um, also just need to be a bit mindful of the fact that sometimes you might need to let it dry a little bit more carefully um, before you go over it. So I decided at that point that I was just going to go and pop in the greens for up, um, from up into here. Um, and again, it's just a case of the colors didn't look right to start, you know, needed a few layers in there to get them to um, get them to look, you know, quite right. And as I said, so I was using the ultramarine and the Cadioli medium. I also had a little bit of a play with the, you know, the thalo, but it's it, the thalo green that is. Um, but it's a, it's a quite a cold, it is a cold green. Um, it does need a lot of yellow to warm it up and I just I wasn't really quite happy you know sort of blending everything all in so I had a bit of a play with that it didn't really work um, and I also had a little bit of chromium green because I also really like that color I think it's a really useful color and um, sort of in the end you can see that paint's just pulling off in there again um, I went back to this sort of the ultramarine and um, the cad yellow medium um, again uh, and then to uh, sort of neutralize the um, the green a little bit in there I added just a little bit of the I think there's some burnt sienna or even a teeny touch of the the red into the green just to knock the intensity out of it um, and then daily painting I didn't quite get the effect I wanted with that as well so I added a little bit of black into some of the darker areas um, in the top of the chili and as you can see it's just each time around just going in with another layer of paint and it kind of just you know like sort of models it all through um, with what I wanted to what I wanted to do there uh, of course you could get some similar effects with some you know big bold strokes and things and um, you know like a thicker layer of paint um, but as I said that's not the way I like to paint <laughs> And I'm just working on those, um, working on those edges, um, and, and just you know, just sort of thinking about which ones are going to be sharper, um, you know. So ones that are sort of going into the shadows are sometimes that little bit more fuzzy, and ones that are in the light are a little bit more brighter. Um, and then you can see there again, just repopping back in that little bit of reflected light that sort of come off the come off the table as well. Um, so it's got that, you know, that little bit of light down, right down on the bottom edge there, and then a bit darker, um, and then the light on the top from where the, um, 
in the lamps and things are hitting it we still need to pop in all the the actual like flash from you know the camera and things camera lights and things on there but we're just sort of kind of getting the form of that kind of in before I put in the um, the chili sorry before I put in the actual the lights um, and then I'm just popping in you can see that darker color that's going through there with a bit more of the um, uh, sort of ready orangey browns just to desaturate down that green as well as darken it up and add a little bit of black as well so it's a bit darker and a bit more um, desaturated as well uh, and just to remember and always a key tip with that is when you're lightening greens uh, you don't always necessarily want to add white um, obviously you can add a little bit but if you do that you're going to desaturate and sort of change the color and sometimes what you actually really need to add to the green to lighten it is um, yellow um, a little bit of white but also um, also yellow is the one you want to add if you just add white to your green you're going to end up with um, a very very pale sort of sage sort of color rather than you know the the lighter colors that you're probably probably looking for um, something that my daughter keeps doing from time to time she'll just add white to things to make them lighter and it's like no 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 you probably don't want white at this particular point um, and then I'm just even though the actual chili this was that sort of line you know um, is not quite so well defined there I've just popped it in just for the you know the painting just makes it a little bit easier to put that little bit of you know shadowing under that you know cap where the um, the chili has come out of and I'm just sort of popping in those again I actually ever so slightly changed I guess the color from um, the actual original with that um, just for you know artistic license I guess I just wanted them a little bit different um, maybe that is more of a like a chromium green on the um, on that stem there but um, of certainly on the the one on I'm painting there but um, I just left it as it was <clears throat> And another very useful color I have on there is the um, Naples, Naples yellow. I don't know if I might have put a little bit in there, I'm not sure. Um, a lot of these colors I just had on the palette because um, they were on another um, an, another palette I was working on. There was great big blobs of them left, so I kind of like just you know pulled them off with a palette knife and put them on the new palette just to keep them keep them going because that's a, um, a wet palette there so this sponge under there with water in it um, because I'm up and down up and down with like kids and things like that um, I can't always you know uh, keep a, a normal palette um, you know usable for a long enough period for me to actually not get so frustrated and waste all my paint like every single time so um, being able to keep you know paints um, acrylic paints wet for you know a few hours a few days even um, is actually really handy and again just never really quite happy with what I was doing there just so you know just playing in and out with adding some extra colors I had a little bit of time left and I was like yeah you know we can we can we can change this again and put in a little bit more yellow um, and I think it was sort of at this point that I realized that what I actually needed was the darker colors in um, as well as the you know the lights it's one of those things how do you make something lighter you know either you add you know white or yellow whatever it might happen to be and make the you know the area lighter or you um, like that or you add dark colors in around it to um, you know like change your perception of what it is and it's you know sometimes you just sort of need to either do both or pick or see which way you know around it goes so as you can see there, putting white in has changed that colour to, you know, quite sagey rather than, um, uh, you know, like more yellowy. So I just wanted to lighten it and then I'll go back over with the colour as well. As you can see there, so just popping in a little bit more yellow. Um, and of course, you know, when I'm when I'm painting this through, I'm also thinking, ah, oh, well, like, oh, there's that, that reflected light sort of thing coming in through there. And it is a bit smoky too. It looks a bit white rather than, you know, like yellow, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> coming off the table there. You can just see it in the top of that, um, the actual chili that's on the table there, you know, that little tiny strip of that sort of smoky color that's sort of coming in through there from, you know, reflected off the table. Um, 
and just um, yeah so just playing around with those and obviously on top of this we have the two other key you know aspects of these chilies that needs to go in and that is the shadows um, that you know will would sit, sit the chilies down a little bit more and then also the actual like flashlights that's going in across there where I'm just starting to have a bit of a play we see how I want to see how I want to do those because um, it was as you can see in the chili down there quite a lot of like you know flashlight sort of from the from the camera um, in the tops of those uh, they did move around a little bit as the light was changing in the room too so um, I did have a little bit of artistic license I guess um, with some of that as well and you can probably just see there I'm just adding a little bit of red into um, those those greens in there it desaturates the color down and makes it less green um, it's very handy to pop those through sometimes um, you know it's something when I'm painting grass or trees or you know those sorts of things that I will always have some form of a, a red or an orange um, on my palette just to desaturate down um, those colors and the ultramarine is also pretty good like that it doesn't create extremely extremely bright greens um, even um, you know even with you know a, a wide variety of yellows and ultramarine because it's you know a little bit further around on the color wheel I do have a video I think that goes through this um, it makes a relatively you know sort of desaturated green you don't get quite froggy greens like you do with a um, a more bluey green color like cerulean or cobalt or something or that lovely color that's in the background that you can see there which is the um, it's cobalt teal love that color it's so pretty I use it so many of my paintings um, and again what you know their acrylic paints they dry really quickly so um, you know the 30 seconds I'm painting up there you know is just letting those layers on the um, the chilies dry enough for me to be able to pop this light sort of kind of in through here um, and there's a couple of um, you know patches of the light so there's sort of the um, the area around the flash that's a little bit lighter and then there's actually the you know the very white dot you know like of the actual light obviously you have to put the you know the, the surrounding areas in first before you can put in the actual bit but um, I was also just popping in a couple of those just to see roughly where I wanted them so you know I can easily just um, paint around and paint over them um, as I go and that light was actually really white rather than like the chili itself being sort of um, more yellow but there was also a little bit of you know yellow lights and stuff coming in through there as well so I was just sort of trying to play around and see exactly which bits I wanted to you know which bits I wanted to capture because I mean while this is a painting of the chilies you don't have to do it absolutely exactly if you don't really want to you know you can change bits around um, for artistic license if you want <clears throat> oh yes it was at this point that I realized I'd made sort of a little bit of a muddy hole in the middle of that one yet again um, just don't have quite all that you know like dexterity back in that hand and it really is sometimes just pulling the paint back off again <laughs> So it's just sort of on and off, putting putting the paint on, pulling it back off again, on again. But as I said, this is a, you know, like it's an hour painting. I did all of this in an hour, so that was my, my time limit, that was my guide, that was what I'd allowed, and it's what we, you know, what we ended up with. So um, could I have done this, you know, like in 15 minutes with, a, you know, different brush and stuff? Yeah, probably. And so I'm just popping in a shadow, shadow there. Um, if I'd had more time to make this a little bit more, the paint layer more even, um, shadows normally are a more even coat of paint, um, I would have done that. Um, you can see the colour just in the background there and I've obviously taken it off because my hand just won't hold the, hold, hold around there correctly. Um, I think that was just a cat sorry um and I'm just popping in yeah that shadow now of course because the the chili sort of sitting up 
in a couple of places on that table that um, the shadow doesn't hit the um, hit the chili in all of those places so that's why there's those little you know gaps and things um, around the chili where it um, was sort of sitting proud sitting proud of the table um, and if I'd had a little bit more time I was running out of time at this point um, I would have sort of smoothed out that um, that shadow a little bit a little bit better than I did um, but I also wanted to put you can see the top of the chili on the left hand side there's got that little bit of a weird stalk bit that's sort of popping out and I know I wanted to put that in as well um, into into the painting so um, I was just sort of neatening up these edges um, you could use like a you could go back in with the the um, background color too if you've got some that's still um, still mixed up um, or you could use a, um, a damp brush and just sort of carefully <clears throat> go around the edges to get them to get them in right um, and then once I got those shadows in I was just sort of you know readjusting a little bit and just popping in um, a few extra little bits of lights that I, I wanted to do again because you know things were drying um, you know I had a little bit of flexibility there you can't put those little flecky bits on um, very easily if your paint is um, still too wet so I was just um, popping popping those through and you can see here I'm ah there we go I'm using the um, the Naples yellow it's such a nice sort of you know, like desaturated yellow is really handy I really love using Naples yellow um, just to pop that through I think I put a little bit of um, raw umber and things in it in a second but I just wanted a quite a light color to go down um, because it makes putting a dark color over it a little bit easier um, rather than it just being pinch it just makes it a bit easier to have a color underneath there and we're nearly done um, uh, we're nearly at our hour our time. I know I've sped this up by about you know five times or so. So um, there we are, and that's the the completed little hour long daily painting of um, the chilies from the garden.